Welcome to the Go Find Out Podcast. I'm Jennifer Jelliff Russell, author, speaker, and entrepreneur, bringing you actionable ideas and interviews with awesome women to help you pursue your dreams and achieve your goals. You can find more episodes of the Go Find Out Podcast by visiting gofindoutpodcast.com. Enjoy the show and go find out. Welcome back to Go Find Out, the Career Switch Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Jelliff Russell, and this is episode number 72. Today, I'll be interviewing Krishan Lampley about her career switch from art gallery owner to building Love Corkscrew, a thriving national wine brand. But first, let's jump into my personal update. Hello, career switchers. Lots of things happening since the last episode. Writing and solo episodes are still on the back burner for now as I tackle other goals and focus my attention on getting seedlings for the farm ready to go into the greenhouse. So that's exciting. I spent the last week in Indianapolis for a conference where I had the opportunity to present on client and case management best practices. It had been a little while since I'd done a speaking event, but it was really fun to get back into it. I'm also wrapping up my UX design bootcamp with Avo Academy. I ended up extending past the initial eight weeks and should complete the foundations course by May 1st. So yay! I really like that with this program, I didn't have to pay any extra to extend my time. And giving myself a little bit more time has been really helpful and lets me absorb the information better without feeling how I'm rushing. Soon I'll be building out my portfolio with awesome projects and applying for positions. I honestly, I I can't seem to help myself and I have already started job searching in my few free moments. I'm also planning on taking a Coursera module from the University of Michigan on extended reality or XR, which covers things like augmented reality and virtual reality, both of which I am really fascinated by. I also plan to take some courses on HTML and CSS coding as I feel it's important to get a feel for what the front end developers will be doing. And that way I can have a more knowledgeable conversation with those developers who I would be on a team with in a position. And that way when they implement the design, I can better communicate what I'm trying to create as a UX designer. And then I will also understand what they're saying as a developer. This to me is what career switching is all about. It's about pursuing those passions while also being cognizant of what your new career field requires in order to be successful. When I do those quick job searches, I'm making sure to note what general experience those organizations are looking for, as well as what specific software they require experience in. If you use job descriptions as a guide for what courses or experiences to pursue, it can really help set you up as a better candidate for those roles. And as you pursue gaining experience in whatever it is that's listed in those job descriptions, you'll also gain a sense of whether or not you'll actually enjoy those roles. Because if a job specifically asks you to be experienced or an expert in a specific task or a specific tool, and you find that you hate that task or tool, then you'll know that jobs with that tool or experience listed in the job description might not be the best fit. All right, that is all I've got for my personal update. Now let's jump into the interview with Krishan and hear about her career switch. Today I'm speaking with wine negotiant and owner of the wine brand Love Corkscrew Wines, Krishan Lampley. We'll be focusing on her career shift from art gallery owner to becoming the first African-American woman in the Midwest to go national with a wine brand. Welcome to the show, Krishan. Thanks for having me. So excited to be here. <laughs> yes, me too. I'm super stoked to talk to you. And and before we kind of dig into the, the really fun topic of wine, um, first, I, I would love to hear more about your art gallery, which was also a full bar, right? It was. That was so much fun. Uh, it was an art gallery we started in the South Loop of Chicago years ago, years ago. And we were the first African-American women in the uh, entire South Loop to ever have a liquor license um, and art gallery there. Wow. So it was really cool because we we always were in, my business partner and I at the time, were always uh, into the arts. And You know, you would always go to art galleries and people would be drinking a glass of wine and enjoying the art. And I said, well, why don't we actually legalize this, you know, like (laughs) have it exactly where there's really a bar there and, you know, people loosen up and sometimes they might, you know, buy a few more pieces if they have a couple of glasses of wine. That's true. (laughs) Right. We wanted (laughs) to really set a mood and a tone and it was so much fun. Um, It was great times. But uh, when we created the menu, 
um, I wrote the menu and we actually won Chicago's best for the best wine what? list. So that's so that cool. Kind of knew I had a knack for it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And so what actually made you start thinking about becoming a wine negotiant and wine brand owner? Did it kind of come from, you know, making the wine list and realizing, ah, I, like you said, I have a knack for this. That with the, uh, just the mixture also of being in sales and marketing for so many years, I've been mm. in it for 25 years. So I love people. And when, if I go back to my, my college years and when I came out, you know, I wasn't drinking at the time the apple martinis and cosmopolitans like everyone else was. I was really into wine flights. I, I always kind of had had a, a little mature palate, you know, than, than my generation. So it really was a, a knack of people. It, it was, yes, um, owning the art gallery and wine, writing that wine list, but it was also working in distribution and sales side. So when I wasn't in the fashion side, I was actually in the wine and spirits side. And I would always hear the same thing. We want to support small batch or local, or we don't want to have, you know, everything that everyone else has in, in our establishment. So I kind of just put all of those skills that I just explained together. And mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to do what everyone told me I can't do. And, and that's going to create my own brand. And that's what I did uh, nine years later. Wow, that is so awesome. And now, obviously, I know that you've already owned one successful business um, with the art gallery, but did you have like any naysayers or negative Nancys when you talked about starting Love Corkscrew Wines? Oh, I have negative Nancys with any business I've ever created, <laughs> anything I've ever done. You know, I always say that there's someone who's always going to say, whatever one thing you say, you should have 10 other things, right? Mm. If, if you're um, a pet shop, you should also sell handbags there and you should also be a tax purveyor. Like, you know, like it's, it's always someone saying what you're doing is not enough. And it just has to be, I always say your passion follows you and mm. you just have to go full steam ahead. We can write a business plan 20 times, it can be perfect. Doesn't mean you're going to have the perfect business. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you just have to take what you're good at and you may not even know it. Sometimes you have to have your friends or family tell you because it just becomes so natural. It's so natural to you, right? Because yeah. you're great at it. So you don't pay attention to it. And mine was always people. But yes, of course, to this day, I still get naysayers, you know, been in business for nine years, over a million bottles sold and people still talk about me, but it's, it's, you just have to keep going and know that, you know, not, not everyone's going to be in your corner and that's okay. You have to be in your corner first. Mm, I think that's such a good point. And, and I love what you said about your passion. And do you, do you feel like you had sort of an aha moment of like, oh, wine is my passion um, before you started Love Courts Crew? You know, again, it, it found me, it kind of mm. hit me in the head, you know, like with the <laughs> bottle. It, it wasn't, you know, I, I never was like, okay, I'm going to start a wine brand and that's what I'm going to do. No, it just all made sense. Mm. Um, again, having the liquor license and, and uh, running a bar on that end, working in the distribution side, you see what, what happens, whether it be the brand or whether it be the restaurant or, or the big box store. So, so I saw all the angles mm -hmm. and I met the right people and just with so many years in sales and marketing it just happened. Yeah. And of course, you know, that, that I'm telling you the easy way. This took years and years <laughs> and years, but, right. um, but, but it just, it made sense and it all came together like that perfect pot of gumbo. Nice. I like it. And did you have any fears when starting the business? Yeah, I'm still scared. I'm scared every day, scared every day. Um, when I did it, it was very much of, uh, it, I, I'm just going to, this is who I am. You know, I, I've mm -hmm. always been an entrepreneur at heart. Um, I'm always going to, to make it make sense. I don't like the term serial entrepreneur because um, that makes it seem as if you're going to jump, just jump, jump, jump. You know, right. no, I don't do that. You know, I, I really go full steam ahead in, in what I want to do and make it make sense. Now there's pivoting, mm -hmm. but I don't jump. Uh, so it, it just was, it just made sense. Um, but yeah, I'm scared all the time. I'm always mm -hmm. scared. I'm scared today. <laughs> How do you push through that? What methods do you use to push through that? You know, I always say my heart's still beating. So I, that means I have a purpose hmm. and it's not all about you. When, you know, once you get it out of your head that it's not about you, things get a lot of, lot easier to stomach. Hmm. Um, when I look at my journey, you know, and to this day, I have people that come up to me and hug me or cry or jump up and down. I'm like, oh my God, you're the wine lady. When I'm in my head about all the no's I got that day. Mm. You know, I have a young woman come up crying because they met me. That keeps me going. 
And that makes it all make sense. So what I'm going through may not be for me. It may be for someone to see what I'm going through. And and I always say, if I, you know, I'm, I'm here to break every glass ceiling till there's no more to be broken. That's so awesome. And what would you say that your biggest challenge has been with starting or running Love Course Crew? Definitely being a minority in this industry. I mean, mm. I, if you really want to get down to the gritty, I, I equate for like 0.0009% of the entire industry. Wow. Um, and not only being a woman, which mm-hmm. is a very minute part of this wine world, but being African-American woman, um, right. which just cuts that, you know, to one one hundredth. So um, it uh, each day that that is complicated and it's a lot of things that I have to go through. A mm. lot of people don't believe um, that I'm the owner of Love Corkscrew. So really? it's it's a lot daily. So being a minority in this industry is is no joke. Mm. And do you feel like you have any specific habits that have helped you to become successful? Consistency um, mm. and moving forward. Like today, I just got a really bad no. Like literally right oh. before this interview, I got oh, a no. really bad no. Because <laughs> oh, I was working really hard for. But mm. I, I emailed my team, I text my team, and I said, hey, this is a bust. So now let's move on, mm. onward and upward. We have other things to to handle. So it, it's it just, I just got to keep going. Mm. I just got to keep going. So it's consistency, it, it's movement, it's moving on to the next. And again, um, th- th- there's nothing that it, it affects me, but it affects me for like 10 minutes. Mm. And then I got to keep it, keep it moving. Yeah. And it's so interesting, the idea of pushing through those difficult, you know, challenges and continue, like you said, keep moving forward. Um, and then also the idea of, you know, sometimes having to pivot. Um, I think those kind of go together sometimes. Oh, absolutely. And this whole, the last two years um, with the pandemic, uh, with civil unrest, it's been a lot of pivoting. I mean, how do you go from, you know, being a wine company that does wine tastings, you know, everything's in person Mm -hmm. to all of a sudden, literally in Chicago at one point in time, over 85% of my, you know, accounts were closed. Oh my gosh. Because of looting or because um, closed because of the pandemic or no workers, whatever the case may be. So, you know, I had to pivot these last two years and I had to focus a lot more on online presence. I had to do virtual tastings. I learned to use Zoom. I didn't use Zoom prior to the pandemic. Mm. I was always in someone's face. So yeah, a lot of pivoting, a lot of pivoting. And I know that word is used very loosely, but you have to as a small business, otherwise you're not going to survive. Right, exactly. And now I'm I'm so glad that you, you mentioned the virtual piece. Um, I was just playing around on your website these past couple of days, and I found a really awesome YouTube channel that you guys have. It's Love Corkscrew, right, is the name of the U- YouTube channel? Yes, yes, yes. We have some fun things, yeah. Yes, yes. It's so cool. And so, and then you also mentioned the virtual tastings. Now, I haven't gotten a chance to, to do that um, or dig into that too much. So can you tell us a little bit more about the virtual tastings? Sure. So during the pandemic, again, we couldn't do the in-person flights and mm. and events, and we had to cancel a lot of those. So it was funny. It was just simply my publicist saying to me, hey, we just canceled like 10 huge conferences, <laughs> you know, Jeez. and we had to, to cancel all this money. We have at least six figures worth of events that we were going to travel to um, that year in 2020, yeah. actually. Mm-hmm. And so when we had to cancel it all, she's like, well, what you know you can ship you can ship almost to every state so why don't we do virtual events hmm. where you ship the wine to the consumer and we you know we're on the zoom and you're walking through the varietal picks you're walking through pairings um some people want to hear more technical stuff someone people people just want to hear my journey hmm, that's um, true. and and being an entrepreneur so I mean, we did everything from large women's sororities to um, Amazon execs. We had mm. over 64 of them. Um, so we did a little bit of everything. And some of it was not even about wine, which was really awesome, right? They yeah. just had so many questions about my journey. And that was super cool. So, yeah, we've still continued to do it. And I, I even have one tonight. So, <laughs> That's so, so cool. th- those are still happening. Um, a lot of, you know, corporations who aren't going back to the office, right? They're just not going to, um, they love the virtual tastings. It, oh. you know, gives great, um, employee morale and, and it's fun. 
Yeah. And, and it feels like, you know, by pivoting and adding this as part of your business, now you could continue doing the virtual, even though many things have gone back to in-person. Absolutely. Of course, you know, it's not as many um, anymore. However, they're still very consistent um, and they still serve a great purpose in this new world we live in. It's never going to be exactly how it was back then, you know? Mm. So there is still going to be going forward and I can see it already um, a virtual world Mm. um, that still exists, especially with companies not going back to their office space. So um, yeah, yeah, I think it's it's not going to stop. And so I, I always like to kind of ask, like, you have had, you know, so many successes, which is fantastic. Um, and I, I think it's really easy for entrepreneurs to kind of forget about those successes or really not forget about them, but really more kind of be like, okay, I did that now next thing and kind of ignore their successes or let them go by the wayside. So do you have a specific way that you celebrate your successes? Gosh, by just sitting for a little bit um, and breathing and then thinking back, mm -hmm. looking through old pictures, looking through my phone, because yes, you are absolutely right. A lot of times us entrepreneurs forget about it right. because we are so focused on the next mm -hmm. or we get consumed by those bad things. Right. Um, so I literally have to sit sometimes and say to myself, oh my God, I was on billboards in Times Square. Like, like I had to actually sit and look at the pictures and see, oh my God. That is so amazing. Um, I really had to sit and yeah. say, oh my God, I did a TEDx. That's so cool, so yeah. there, there's certain things that yes, sometimes we forget about mm. and you just have to say, you know what? Some people would say what you've accomplished already is complete success, mm -hmm. even though you still keep moving forward and want more. Uh, yeah, so I just have to sit and breathe. Nice. So now I, I really, of course, want to do the even more fun part of this interview, which is talking about the wines themselves. Um, so, so of course, I have to ask, do you have any specific favorite wine out of the ones that you have created and owned? Oh, gosh, yes, my Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> that was easy. On, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, there was not even a thought. That is my pride and joy. That one was the first one I ever sourced uh, from California. Oh. And it is just, to me, the most easy introductory Cabernet Sauvignon. A lot of people say they like cab, but when they taste a really gritty, muddy, serious cab, they're like, oh, not so much. Oh. <laughs> so I wanted a nice introductory cab for people that like the Pinot Noirs and Merlots and Malbecs of the world. Yeah. Um, and it just it's just so good and, and has a fruitiness to it that just makes it so scrumptious. That's awesome. And that one's the we're moving on up, right? We're moving on up yep, from it. the Jeffersons. We're moving awesome. on up. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and it looks like I can just like buy your wines right from your website. Is that accurate or does it tend to like depend on like what state you're in? Pretty accurate. There's only a few states that we don't ship to um, and it's stated on the website. But yes, um, we get sales all the time um, from lovecorkscrew.com. Really easy. Mm -hmm. And if you did want to find a store in your area, just put in the zip code uh, within our store locator and we'll see if we're, we're in your area. We've grown so quickly. We're in 15 states now that we're available. We're not available in every state in store, but definitely it's easy to, to find out. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll more than likely ship it to you. Mm, okay, nice. And now I also understand that you are launching a new collection of wines called the Lampley Reserve. So can you tell us a little bit more about that and how those are going to be different? Yes, yes. So Love Corkscrew, I always say, speaks to the consumer. Love Corkscrew is for you. Love Corkscrew is, you know, you may not be able to pronounce Bordeaux, Chianti, Chenin, and Blanc. <laughs> right. And you may not care to, mm -hmm. you know? So it's it's very easy, simple, it's fun, catchphrase, double entendre. And you're going to remember Head Over Heels. You're mm -hmm. going to remember Good Times, Good Friends. You're going to remember We Go High. So it's it's something fun. The Lampley was created for me. Mm, okay. It was created for my lineage, for my heritage and a a really great um, a really great feeling that I wanted to give to my last name. It's my last name is very rare, mm. um, but very strong. And Lampley is just a way for me to leave a legacy. Um, and it's so awesome because on the bottles it has my family, oh, um, my so demi sec, cool. which I just launched. That's an amazing picture of my mother. Um, I have some other varietals coming soon um, that are going to have my grandparents and, and my father. And it's really cool because the Lampley I actually 
sourced from all around the world. Mm. So it's always going to be very small batch. Okay. Um, it's always going to be something different and intriguing and special and uh, definitely reserve. Uh, so the pricing is going to be much higher, but it, it's very, um, it's, it's just true to me. Mm. Love pork shoes for the consumer. The Lampley is, is for me. Nice. And now is that out yet or is that coming? So the Demisec is available, very small batch. Okay. I literally only have about 50 cases uh, left of it. Um, and uh, the other ones are coming soon, but I'm looking to source from South Africa. Ooh. I'm looking to source a little bit from Washington State. And I have some wine coming in from Chile right now. So it's going to be from different areas around the entire world. Mm, that's so cool. So basically get it now while you can before yes. it goes away. Yes, right? Demisec will be gone soon. Oh, oh no. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so kind of shifting to providing advice to other entrepreneurs, because you said, you know, you want to kind of break glass ceilings and break glass barriers for other women, um, and especially other women of color. What advice would you give to other women out there who are thinking about starting a business? gosh, don't put the cart before the horse. And I know that's a very generic, like easy, like, what are you talking about, Grishad? You know, my grandmother said that, or, or it, it's so true. I, I actually mentor a lot of entrepreneurs. I have um, on my website, I have a small business forum where I talk to entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one mm. for 30 minutes or 60 minute sessions. And the last one I just had was very interesting because she was and thought in, in her product, and it wasn't wine, it was another product, that she was ready to hit the big box stores or, you know, Krishan, what do I do next? Where, where do I go next? And, and, and she was spending money in her mind, you know, ready to spend all this money without even doing the basics. And when I say the basics, a lot of entrepreneurs think that because if you get into a big box store right away, you're rich. No, you're spending more money while you're in there. It's really just a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you need to be making a lot of money on your dot com first. That's where you need to focus. Yeah. You need to really focus on your social media platform. That's where you really need to focus. Mm -hmm. So get there first. Tell me, I want you to tell me that you can't take it anymore because you can't keep up with the orders. You can't keep up with the responses. Then you take things to the next level, but slow down, mm. slow down. And I just tell entrepreneurs every day, day by day, you need to tell me that you just have so much money that you can't keep up with these orders and you need to hire somebody because it's so much work. Tell me that before you're telling me that you're going to spend six figures or five figures on something that you don't need yet. Right. Yeah, I think that's fantastic advice. I have definitely found myself doing that with my small business. So I get it. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Yeah. I mean, I did it. I'm not even, you know, I, I'm I'm one that did it back in the day. Mm. So that's why I'm, I'm taking my, my what I've learned, my right. lessons. And I'm telling people how to, to do better than me. Do better. Nice. I like it. So now where can we learn more about you and your delicious wines? Please go to lovecorkscrew.com. Everything's there on my website from, like I said, my TED Talk to shopping for Love Corkscrew to inspiration. Everything's there. The Love Seats, which are, are great three-minute um, videos that I do just to give entrepreneurs advice or life or, or transparency. Mm. Um, and of course, all my social media, Love Corkscrew, you will see my story and my journey. And I'd love people to follow me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. It was so much fun. Thanks for having me. This was such a fun and great interview. One thing that I really wanted to highlight from speaking with Krishan was when asked about dealing with naysayers, Krishan said that not everyone is going to be in our corner, but that we had to be in our corner first. I think that that is such an important point. When going after our goals or making a big career switch, it can be tough to stick to your guns and persevere to reach your goal. 
Persevering can be especially hard if you have close friends or family who might unwittingly act as naysayers because they feel they're voicing concerns out of a place of love or care. Like Krishan said, not everyone is going to be in your corner. It's important that we stay true to ourselves and keep going after those goals. That we get back at it every day to take steps towards our goals, even if it's baby steps, even if we're scared or nervous about whatever that next step is. Letting naysayers get into our heads can make us waver. It can make us start to give up on those goals. So don't let anyone knock you out of your own corner. Stick to what you know you want and look for those people who will be in your corner. Look for people who have done something similar to what you want to do. They can be a great ally in helping you go after those big, scary goals. But most of all, as Krishan said, make sure that you are in your own corner. All right, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Krishan. Definitely check out her wines. I'll be back with a new episode on May 16th, where I interview Naya Barry, who made a career switch to software engineering and now helps guide others to careers in tech. Until then, go find out. Thanks for listening to the show today. I hope you found the information beneficial and that it helps you tackle your own Go Find Out goals. You can find more episodes and the show transcripts at gofindoutpodcast.com. You can also let me know what you thought of the show by tweeting me at GFO Podcast or follow me on Instagram at GoFindOutPodcast. That's it for today. Now go find out.